Give God an enormous hand clap of praise and celebration of this union. <laughs> Dearly beloved, we are gathered here in the presence of God and this company to join together this man and this woman in holy matrimony. With all institutions on earth, that have within them the possibilities for good. None is more important than a home. Marriage was sanctified by God, honored by Christ, and it is to be respected and enjoyed by God's people. And it should therefore be entered into reverently, discreetly, and in the reverence of God, into this holy estate, Justin and Alexis, come now to be joined. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the joy, the beauty, the sacredness of this hour. We thank you for your love, which surrounds Justin and Alexis. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this celebration of this marriage. And Father, we ask that your will will be done continually in the lives of Justin and Alexis. Satan, we bind any assignment that you may have against this holy union in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Before we go forward and Pastor Keisha want to be talking about, you can still be That's okay. Um, as she's going to be talking about the definition of love, I wanted to talk to you about just for a few moments on the power of faith. In our last premarital counseling session, we actually had some things that we were going to talk about. We had some T's to cross and some I's to die. But the Holy Spirit had us to minister to you about faith. And during that time, Alexis made a powerful statement when she said, there's, no, there's not going to be any faith breaks. Why is faith so important? Because in terms of the society that we live in today, there's going to be a lot of things that try to come up against your union, different adversities, circumstances, and situations. But like we said initially in our first course, when we first got together, that faith in God was going to be the key for you to overcome any circumstance or situation in your marriage. So we encourage you to continue to stand strong in faith. We want to let you know that God is choosing you both to walk a life of faith and you want to see powerful victories in your marriage. Amen. 
I want to give you both God's definition of love. It's found in 1 Corinthians 13, starting with verse 1. It says, love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy, and it does not boast. Love is not proud. It's not rude. It is not self-seeking, and it is not easily angered. It keeps no records of wrongs. I mean, absolutely no records of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but it rejoices with the truth. It always protects. It always trusts. Love always hopes. It always perseveres because love never fails. One of the things that I wanted to go over with you is something that we discussed in our premarital counseling, and that was establishing priorities in your marriage. And the one thing that we talked about with that is that there is a list of priorities, and there's an order of things. And usually when people have issues in their marriage, it's because one of the priorities is out of whack. So those priorities is, number one, God first. If you keep God first, you'll be fine. The second priority is each other. Always put your, each other next to God. After that, it's then your children. After your children, then it's your jobs. And after your jobs, it's everything and everybody else. And as long as you keep that priority in check, your marriage will be successful. Another point that I wanted to make to you is about the purpose of marriage. You know, we are all born with a purpose. Everything on this planet was born or created with a reason for being here. And I'm telling you, when you begin to understand the purpose of your marriage, that purpose, that reason for you knowing why God put you together, that will be the very thing that will help you to overcome any situation any circumstance or anything that will ever come against you. Always know what your purpose for being together is. Me and Pastor Keisha will be married 20 years next year. And when we think about everything we had to endure over those 19 years, one to 20 years, when, when we look back, if there was a disagreement, if there was when we wasn't connecting like we should. It was something, it was a glue that always brought us back together and gave us a laser beam focus to continue on the path for a successful marriage. And that was understanding that we had a purpose together. Yes, individually I have a purpose, Pastor Keisha individually has a purpose, but God joined you together to fulfill a purpose. And when you know your purpose for your marriage, there will never be a lack of insignificance. There will never be insecurity. There will never be emptiness because you know you're on earth to fulfill a purpose. Ephesians 5, verse 28 through 30, 33 says, in the same way husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. After all, no one ever hated his own body, but he feeds it and cares for it just as Christ does the church. For we are members of his body. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. This is a profound mystery but I'm talking about Christ and the church. However, each one of you all also must, and husbands love his wife as he loves himself, and wife must respect her husband. Your marriage is going to be a representation of Christ and his church. Christ loves his church. He loves his body. In the same way, in this scripture, Justin, you represent Christ. And Alexis, you represent the body. And just as Christ loves, feeds, and cares for his body, 
that's how you want to do for your life. And when you do that, the world is going to take note of this union. You're going to bring glory to God. You're going to advance his kingdom because you're going to be a living testimony of love. Let's give God praise for that. Now, again, Justin, we've been talking about marriage as related to Christ and the church. Now, who do you represent in the marriage? You represent Christ. And like Christ, are you willing to continue to love and care for Alexis? Amen. Now, Alexis, you represent the church. We know that most women don't like the word submit, but are you willing to respect Justin and submit to him as he submits to Christ? Amen. Now, in Matthew 19 and 3, it talks about how long you should be married. And that's an easy question forever, right? <laughs> Also, one of the most important things when it comes to a marriage, as we talk about love and faith, is agreement. Agreement is key. In Matthew 18 and 19, it says, again, I say, if two of you on earth agree as touching anything that you ask, it will be done for you by our Father in heaven. Everything in life when the enemy wants to try to come up against this union, he wants to try to come up against your agreement. But you have to make a point in your marriage to look and to be intentional and on purpose to find things to agree upon. And if you agree, your Father in heaven is going to answer and fulfill all your desires, your wants and your needs. So look for things to agree upon. All right, so we want to ask you to face each other. And I want everyone in the audience to point or to stretch your hands to this couple. And I want you to repeat these words. Say, Father God, in Jesus' name, I speak and I commit from this day forward to never speak a negative word over this union. I call this marriage blessed and we are in agreement that this marriage is God ordained in Jesus name. Amen. Justin, do you take Alexis Linderman, as your wife, as your own flesh, to love her, even as Christ loved the church, to protect her and honor her for the rest of your life. Yes, I do. We'll make this profession of faith. I, Justin, according to the word of God, be my mother and father and join myself to you, Alexis, to be a husband to you. To this moment forward, we shall be one in Jesus' name. Alexis Linderman, do you take Justin Black as your husband, submitting yourself unto him as unto the Lord, showing reverence to him as the head of this union for the rest of your lives? Now, Alexis, make this confession, this profession of faith. I, Alexis, I, Alexis according, to God, according to the word of God, submit myself to you, myself to, you to, love to love you, and to be a wife to you. From this moment forward, we shall be one. Amen. Well, at this time, Justin and Alexis will now give their own vows. Justin, 
You're my best friend, travel buddy, my home, and now my husband. I never imagined. I never imagined finding someone like you, someone who would love and accept all of me. I could be 100% authentically Alexis around you, and somehow you put up with me. Ever since the first time you held me, I've always felt that the safest place in the world was in your arms. You are my other half. You are my refuge. You give me strength, courage, and motivation for all the times that I'm hard-headed and outspoken. I have four pages. <laughs> <laughs> you are next to me being kind, selfless, patient, and gentle. You compliment me in more, way more ways than I can count. I still can't believe that you agreed to the crazy idea of writing a book with me. Sharing so many truths and pains as a way for us to get even closer and prepare for our marriage. You shared with me the deepest parts of your soul, revealing the deepest parts, your deepest fears, insecurities, and vulnerabilities. And still, you are the most beautiful person in the world. I love every piece of you, even the ones that you thought no one could love. I love everything about you. And I couldn't love you anymore. At least I thought so. But my love for you grows every day. I admire and adore you. You've helped me heal and grow through things I never thought that I could. We wrote a book together in five months and built businesses together. We are breaking curses while creating legacies. We are only in our 20s, and I can't imagine what God has in store for us. You taught me unconditional love, relentless faith, faith in what Jesus' love on earth feels like. I didn't know what love felt like until I met you. You are faithful, humble, and obedient to God's word. I trust you to lead me and our family. It's ironic that we're getting married in 2020 in the middle of a pandemic. <laughs> We've overcome so much, and this is just one more thing. 2020 has been our year of healing and growth. We can honestly get through everything together. I feel like I can take on the world with you by my side. I can't wait to continue building our life and eventually a family together. I love you. Oh. It's amazing how God positions us in life. He presented me with a best friend and a wife that I didn't deserve. You challenged me in ways that I've never been challenged and see potential in me that nobody ever has. When I set low expectations for myself as a fear of failure, you remind me of my strength. You've been so strong for so many people in your life because of the pain you've endured you worked so hard trying to prove your worthiness. No longer do you need to search for validation because God and myself have already validated you. Even when you fall short, I will always be here to forgive you because your forgiveness is already pretty good. Because you are my crown, no longer will you suffer alone. No longer will you cry alone. No longer will you feel abandoned. We will cry together, we will laugh together, we will succeed together, and we will fail together. I remember the exact moment I knew I couldn't let you go. It was when I drove you to the airport in Chicago for yet another study abroad trip like you didn't do enough already, you know. We sat in the parking lot, our face covered in tears. Holding one another because we knew what it felt like to be apart. We knew we couldn't live without each other. And I drove home that day knowing that we would be standing there right here one day.
And as God's daughter, I don't deserve you, but I will dedicate my life to admiring you, Alexis. You are my everything, and I can't do life without you. And I, I can't promise that I won't fall short, but I promise that I will love you forever. And with that in mind, I vow to take the first step in being there for you. I vow to be vulnerable when we try to put our walls up. I vow to sacrifice my selfish wishes for the betterment of us. I vow to be emotionally available when you need me most. I vow to make you your favorite bowl of cereal when you get cranky. You know, the marshmallow food. But most importantly, I vow to be the man of God that you need me to be. And by giving me your hand in marriage, I thank you for trusting in me to be the father of your children and ultimately your life partner. Thank you, Alexis. Friends, please. Justin, take the ring and place it on Alexis's finger and repeat after me. Right. With this ring, With this ring I be with. I be with. It is a token of my love for you. It is a token of my love for you. And a token of my faith. And a token of my faith. That I release over our marriage. That I release over our marriage. And I believe. And I believe. With all my heart. With all my heart. Our marriage is for our marriage is forever. In Jesus' name. You say two words. I give this ring. I give this ring. As a token of my faith. As a token of my faith. I believe with all my heart. I believe with all my heart. That this marriage. That this marriage. Is forever. Is forever. It's my love. It's my love. And my faith. And my faith. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. As representatives of Jesus Christ before Almighty God, and in the name of the Father, and of His Son Jesus, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, we now pronounce you one together. You are now husband and wife. Justin, you may kiss your breath. So you're going to turn around and face the audience. And at this time, Alexis and Justin will conduct a sand ceremony, which represents two people coming together as one. Unity and agreement is the key of power of the Father, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Therefore, we declare that unity will be your key, that nothing will be impossible for you. You got some more We're going to pronounce the blessing over this marriage. We call your marriage blessed for success prosperity, productivity, peace, increase, purpose fulfillment, good health, and long life. You are blessed in Jesus' name. Let's give God praise. Amen. <laughs> Turn around and face the audience. Hold hands. I 
let's all stand, please. At this time, we present to you Mr. and Mrs. Justin Black. Let's celebrate them in Jesus' name.